right, okay, let's have a look at how to use mesh tool in ARCHICAD. We can apply the mesh in a lot of different ways. We can draw the mesh by shapes using the, the two-point box, the rotated or offset box, or the polygon or polygonal option where we define the edges. Of course, all of these take a bit longer to do, and the best way to do anything once we've got a shape already defined is to use our magic wand. And the magic wand, like in Photoshop, uses edges, uses shapes that it can recognize. In ARCHICAD, the magic wand is spacebar. You can see that my cursor changes to a uh, magic wand. And then I'm going to either click inside the, the shape, the closed shape, or on the edge, the line. It's safer to use the edge line because if I've got objects that intersect one another, clicking inside might not work very cleanly. So I'm going to click on the edge, and we can see in one click that created a mesh for us. So with the types of meshes that we've got, we've got, uh, I never know how to say this, a super fleece, which is just the, the top. <laughs> it's changed, it used to be called super fleece, now it's called top surface only, which makes a lot more sense. We've got the top surface with a skirt, so like a tablecloth hanging over a table if you like. Or we've got a solid body, and I generally use the solid body. Um, unless uh, there used to be a tool that we can still get it, but we don't use it very much, which turned mesh into roof. And so if you're making a very complex shape and you wanted to make a roof, we'd use the top surface only, which is zero thickness. And then when we turned it into a roof, it would take our mesh shape, extrapolate that into lots and lots of triangles, and give it a thickness, a depth. So that was a really handy tool, but it had errors. Now we use the morph. The morph tool is a lot better for things like that. All right, so we're going to use the thick one. Let's just make this zero for now. And I usually give it just a, a body of a thousand or whatever the height of the shape is, and we'll get to that later. And that's our mesh. Our mesh is just a flat object, so it's just like a slab to begin with until we start to define heights. How do we define heights of a mesh? We can define heights of a mesh using spot levels or topography levels. If we've got a uh, a survey survey data, if we've taken it ourselves or if we got it from somewhere else, then we can map out these topography levels. And I'm just going to switch files here to a different file because I've done this just recently. Here's a much better, it's much easier to do on a site that's empty than on a, um, a site with a house. So here we see a lot of topography lines and I've drawn these topography lines with a spline. And so we're mapping the lines. Let's find one. Let's just map this one again. I'm mapping this topography line with my spline tool. And then I'm using my mesh tool to define its edge. So I'm going to select my mesh object. I'm going to select my mesh tool and I'm going to magic wand again, click and click on fit to use a ridges and that will define a ridge, a height value. I'm just undoing that now just to go back. Define a height value. But that's a bit complex. Let's just look at a real simple way at the moment. For now, all I'm going to do is define the edges. So just pick on corners and define a height. We've got a height here that says 37.98. So we know that's in millimeters. So, sorry, that's in meters. And if I want to make this work in ARCHICAD, I need to convert that to millimeters. So that's going to be 37 meters. So 37980. And I'm going to add that as a edge. It sometimes gets tricky to click on the, the object that we want. We can either, I'm clicking on the lines, we're actually meant to click on the mesh. I can either use my tab button to alternate between objects when we've got multiples, or maybe I could use the layers to turn it off, or if I don't need this just because it's a duplicate, for now I'll just delete it. Be very careful that you don't delete things that you really need, of course.
37980. Select the edge, select the, the node, the black dot, 37980. When we're doing topography levels, we have topography lines, we need to make sure we press apply to all and it will apply to all of those surfaces at the same time. If we're just doing one then we don't want to apply to all edges. Let's just choose the rest of these edges. 38430. So apply to all, apply to all what? Apply to all nodes. So if I was to apply it to all the nodes, it'll apply to all these black nodes that you see, and that'll make it consistent. In this situation, I don't want to make it consistent. I want to make it inconsistent. So I'm just reading from my survey, what's the heights? 41770. and applying each one individually. So it takes, it's a bit of a tedious job doing this, that's why I'm only showing you this the simple way, not with um, topography lines. 43620, select each one, select Z. If they're very close together, sometimes we don't need to be so accurate. That looks very wrong anyway. 40120, But it's good to have a bit of extra height so you'll just see the difference between them. 40030. And where did I start? Uh, 37890 will do. Alright, so it's easier to do this all, sorry, it's more accurate to do this all in floor plan. And of course that's given us a very deep contour object and now we can see that we've got those heights but it's a lot easier particularly if we get one that just is wrong that's wrong I don't know why it said that number but it's clearly not right we can easily more easily or more visually change this in 3d so I can click on a node point and I can using my Z again I can change the height value. So normally I just want to apply it so it relates to more to one of the other existing heights. And that's probably going to be more accurate in this case. If I was trying to do this by eye, of course I can change it here and that'll change the value, but um, in this case I want to be accurate to, to true sizes. Now, if I'm very good at knowing what I'm doing and I'm not necessarily that fantastic. The survey should also have height data. So here it says that the height of this floor area is 31860 while it says that this is 38740. That scares me massively because the floors aren't, unless that's supposed to be 7, the floors aren't that far apart. So let's assume it's talking about this one, 38740. That should relate to our stories. And that is ground floor. And that's currently 52, so it means it's too large. So I want to change this to, let's say, 36000. And now if I go into 3D, my house should be getting close to sitting at the right level. It's not high enough, so I need to make it bigger. It's height to next, so I definitely need to make it bigger. Let's change that to 8. And that's now sitting more accurately. Does that make sense? That's how we use mesh in, in simple forms. The mesh can be used as a site mesh. If I wanted to make a mesh for a cushion, that's the other, the main reason we use it, we have to think like mesh as a topography map. 
And so that's why it's always important to start with a topography map. Let's say the cushion wants to be, or we want the cushion to be 400 by, let's use this one, 400 by 400. We don't want the cushion to be perfectly straight, uh, so what I'll often do is just start to slightly change the edges just to make it a little bit more customized. Now, if you understand how topography works, we've got lines that represent height values. And so a mountain ridge has concentric circles or something that's like a concentric circle defining the height around the edge. Now I want the edges of this cushion to be flat, to be zero if you like. And I want the cushion to get taller as it gets closer to the middle. I'm going to change the line types of this, just make it solid. And I'm going to leave it red just so it's easy to see. Now I don't need to do this perfectly, and it really shouldn't be perfect, otherwise it's not going to look very realistic. But I'm just going to, using my splines, just build up the shape a bit, give some heights. I'm also showing you this just to show you how to add heights to topography levels. If I grab my mesh, and again I'm going to make this zero, we're going to see that this mesh is flat. It's got no thickness at the moment. It's perfectly flat because I haven't given a thickness. Let's do this one step at a time. Now I want to apply these topography levels to my cushion. I'm going to select the mesh. I'm going to select my mesh tool. It's very important that you do both otherwise it has no idea what you want to do. Now magic wand again and I'm going to click on the splines because the splines currently don't do anything, it's just a reference line. But now we're going to use the splines with my magic wand to add a user ridge which just means define a height value or a consistent height value, a ridge value on my mesh. So these are all flat, let's have a look at these in 3D. It's still perfectly flat, we can see that, but when I click on it, you can now see that I have, sorry it's a bit jittery because I'm zooming in too quickly, we've got all these data levels, things that I can add height to. Again, I could select these all by hand and change them incrementally one at a time, but that's just crazy and it's going to produce a bad result. So what I really want to do is do this in floor plan and I can do this quite effectively and quickly. So again, select the mesh. Now this, I have to think of some maths in my head. If I was to make these incrementally all the same height, I wouldn't be creating a lovely hill, I'd be creating a pyramid. So I need to not do it incrementally, I need to sort of taper it like a hyperbola or whatever it's called. So the edges I'm going to leave at zero. I don't have a lot of different um, height lines. If I wanted to make it much more smooth, I'd have, had, I'd have more. But I want my cushion to only get up to a maximum height of about 100. So I'm going to start with 100. That's a good way to think about it. And I want to taper it. So I'm going to have this being 90. I want this one to be sort of in the middle. Let's make it um, 70, and I want this one being, let's say, 40. Now I'm going to select this and open it up in 3D, and we now see that my cushion is no longer flat, but it has form, 3D form. Now my cushion's flat on the bottom, which isn't exactly realistic, so what I need to do is get a bit creative. I'm going to select this and drag a copy. R uh, 600. It's always good to move it a set value. Now I'm not exactly sure if this is going to work. Let's see how we go. I'm going to make this minus 20. Let's see if it's going to work. 
yep, let's keep going. Minus 30. Minus 35. Minus 40. Let's see if that's worked. Hey, hey. That's open, but it's fine. What I can do is I could make it normal and then flip it around. I can do a few clever things like that, but I don't mind if it's hollow at the moment. It'll, it'll look correct and that's fine. So now I can take this mesh, put it on this one. Let's have a look at them both together. And we've got a pillow. So that's just a quick demonstration of what mesh is about, how it works in a few different instances.